Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your home is going into foreclosure, and you feel like a financial wreck. You don't know where to turn for accurate information. I'm bankruptcy attorney Travis Gagné. Let's talk about some legal options. If we work quickly, we can propose a plan to save your home, modify the loan, or in many cases, even eliminate your second mortgage. The consultation is free. I've helped hundreds of people just like you make informed decisions about whether to save their home or exit it on a reasonable, organized timeline. The chapter you choose sets the tone for the next chapter of your life. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. Well, our show, as you know, all about excellence in this fine field of broadcasting. Yes. We set the bar. We do. And really low. Yeah. Well, it's nice to see that, you know what, uh, other forms of broadcasting really want to reach our levels, want to match our heights. And uh, I love this. Someone put together all the best examples of local news anchors having Freudian slips. Let's get excited about that 69. I mean, that's nice. pretty good this time of year. Isn't it? <laughs> I know you're excited about the win, but no, no, I want that 69. Now let's go back to the hose. Uh, Oh, oh, that's not a terrible. Back to the hoses. Police department in California is taking an unusual approach to catch porn pirates red-handed. Porch pirates, yes. Oh, <laughs> off, pardon me. <laughs> California is farting. Is, is, excuse me, fighting. Photojournalist Brad Rice shows us how a forestry instructor gets his students to make and play the North American skin, or actually the flute in this traveling West Virginia segment. <laughs> he was talking about students, too. Oh. Yeah, he was. That's a bad Freudian slip. <laughs> wow. <laughs> skin flute. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Rev. I can't open Rev is 13. Yeah, yeah he is. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I'm only maybe 14, so yeah. I can't give I giggled at the 69. Yeah. But I, you know what? I haven't heard skin flute in a long time, so I... I no? It's, right? it's how a often, classic. Yeah, how often do you hear that nowadays? Actually, I use it a lot. Really? Just to gross people out. Mm. Mm. It makes people cringe. Really? Yeah. Huh. Oh, is, is people like <laughs> in your generation? Because it's, it's a classic for ours. Yeah, I mean, it's, it doesn't sound sexy at all. So when I tell people, when I refer well, to that as that, they're like, oh. Well, yeah, you don't use it to be a romantic term. No, yeah, not hey, at all. Let me come on over. I'm thinking about playing an instrument. Yeah. <laughs> it's a certain type of flute. Yeah. <laughs> hey, baby, would you like to, you know, play this instrument? Put on the, the, the romantic music. Yeah, you don't hear that term being used very much. These I days. know, and I think we ought to bring it back. The skin flute. Yeah, I think we got to bring that back. I do like the giggle from the uh, co-anchor from the guy that when the woman said 69. Yeah, that and was... You heard that guy go... <laughs> yeah, that guy was 12 at that point. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, you just love it. You love it when people make that kind of mistake and you go, oh, California's farting. I thought that was really great. Yeah, it cracked me up. Yeah, it's like, well, that's true. Somebody is. Ah, oh, it's awesome. So uh, there you go, excellence of broadcasting. <laughs> Starting off your day, and now it's Steve. It's now it's time to educate people that I either a are dumb or just don't care. Oh boy, you know I I, I just I I just can't believe people are this dumb that they actually have to come out with this. But uh, Britain has had to. They've had to issue uh, some guidelines for people. Their National Cyber Security Center. I didn't even know Britain had one of those, but they do. Uh, they have put together a list of 100,000 passwords that are frequently hacked. Mm. Oh. Yeah, I mean, I feel like many years ago we were all a little aloof with our passwords. I think everybody's been guilty at some point of going one, two, three, four, five, however number many numbers as a password. Yeah. Or password as a password. I thought that was clever. That's very clever. And then I realized everybody's doing it. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, you're right. Back, the, I don't know, maybe what? Maybe five, ten years ago we didn't care, but with all the hacking going on and everybody's accounts and... Oh, I would know, say like 10, 15 years ago. I would think that the last five years you think people would be a little bit more heightened on their on their passwords. I, w- I would hope you're right. And then this comes out. And people are using band names like Metallica. They're Good. using Slipknot. And- Simple plan, Danny? Is that your password? <laughs> <laughs> Steve, now I have to change it. Dang it. <laughs> But, it's, you know, it's the funny thing is, is these are some of the most hackable uh, band names that are frequently used. So you got Metallica, you got Slipknot. So you, so a lot of people must be using those if those these are the popular ones that get hacked. I've been guilty of it before. 
Have you really? Yeah. yeah. I used Queens of the Stone Age. Oh, wow. That's that was, but it was always like Queens of the Stone Age and then added like 69, 69 or something stupid. Of course you did. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, if anybody wants to hack into your account, they've got, they just go, look, we've got pretty much all the digits. It's 69, 69. We just have right. to throw some letters in there. 69 is definitely in, well, not anymore, but at some point it was in every single one of my yeah. passwords. Yeah. Oh, when you get married, you're like, oh, I can't be using this anymore? Yeah, it's awkward when your wife says, hey, can I get your password for your eBay? And you're like, oh, man, it's... Yeah, dong lovers. It's, yeah, Vag Party 69. Oh, Vag Party 69. <laughs> Skin Flute 69. Wow. You know, you really don't hear Vag Party much either. No. You know, no, that, no. that needs to be brought back as well. Should it? Yeah. <laughs> I really, yeah, I really, you know, it's, it's, someone I, just it, said my password skin flute sixty nine. There we go. Uh, this might be Danny's Blink one eighty two. Also used. No, I, I just changed it to that. BJ, come on. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. Give away my password. That's the perfect one though, because now you got to have characters and numbers. You're right. It's got a dash, a number, and you put you put a capital B. You've got it all. Yep. Matchbox twenty with an exclamation point. Yeah. <laughs> M and M is uh, something that people use a lot, and then uh, fifty cent. Oh, okay. How about that? Yeah, another that, one. Yeah, at least it has numbers. Now, how about fictional characters? Well, don't use Superman. Apparently, everybody likes to do that. <laughs> don't use Batman. But you get to the point where you can't remember these damn passwords. Now places are making you change them all the time. I know. I don't even remember what half of my passwords are. And th- I mean, they're all like you know on my phone, thankfully, because I just use my damn dumb print. And hopefully nobody uh, hacks into your phone to get all your passwords. That would be horrible. That's, I, I was always afraid of that. Yeah, that would suck. Yeah. People but using they need my thumb then. Oh, we'll get your thumb, Steve. I watch the movies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, yeah. We'll just cut it off. Yeah, oh, that's geez. a problem because I got the new iPhone. It doesn't have a thing for your thumb, so you have to do face recognition. Oh, you get the face recognition. Oh, so when I buy humble something, bragging about her iPhone. I know. I love this thing so much. It's so pretty. Oh yeah, she's got a new one now. But right. it is pretty creepy though. It ha- it recognizes my face. I'm like it unlocked it just now because it looked at me. <laughs> Oh, look, that's she's weird. got the little baby boy I know, there. my little foster pippus. That's Prince Steve right there. Yes. Oh, that's Prince Steve. That's I his forget. name, Prince yes. Steve. I forgot about that. Um, people are using Tigger and Pokemon, by the way. <laughs> and Steve, your, your famous one, password and one, two, three, four, five, six, still still in the top. Dude, anyone using those? I mean, do you feel bad if they if, if somebody breaks into their account? Nope. No. Right? No. I can't believe someone broke into my account. What was your password? Password. <laughs> See, they just don't care. I, I don't think they're that stupid. I just think they go, ha. Ah. Whatever. Well, there's certain things I don't care about. I mean, there's certain, like, you know, if I have, like, a password, if I have a, an account set up with, like, some random store that I don't really care about, I probably, yeah. but, I mean, if your bank account is password, yeah. then you're, you're an idiot. Oh, okay. <laughs> do you think? <laughs> you know, I, 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 that was my first knee-jerk reaction. And then I just realized there are just things that people just don't want to put their time to. You know, uh, they, they realize, because you tell them, because I've talked to people who go, you realize that that's going to be a problem. Ah, well, if it is, I'll deal with it. But then there's you, who's like the, exact, the extreme oh, opposite. Yeah. I don't even understand your passwords. I yeah. hear you and Vicky talk about them, and there's... I, it, it seems to be more letters and numbers in our actual alphabet. Yeah, I, I, I because I, I fall there, I, they, they, and at the end they go, look, when you're doing passwords, be creative and use words memorable to you so people can't guess your password. I do part of that, but then I got to throw characters in there just in case there is somebody that might crack my own brain code. <laughs> Nobody can crack it. There's not a chance. Yeah, you don't think? No. Vicky's no. Vicky, Vicky, nope. so upset every time nope. we change passwords. Like, damn it. It's, they're so complicated, and then I have to relearn the damn thing. Because right. you'll replace, num- like, if you use the letter, if you're, you're spelling something with the word O in it, then yeah. you use the zero. Of course. If there's an E, you use the, letter, the number three. Exactly. That's how we do it. It's too much. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And it drives Vicky crazy, so you know what? That's the added and bonus. it's not like they're short, either. No. They're long. Yeah, they are. It's the only long thing BJ has. Hey. Wow. Happy shots fired. <laughs> well, I mean, really can't argue. Is she wrong? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> My question is, I don't know how she knows, and I'm going to start talking to people. I know oh, your yeah. pants she size. Has, yeah. I know your shirt size. I know everything she about you. She has your password. She probably oh, yeah. gets into your phone and looks at the pictures you send. Oh, that's it's like, yeah. oh, God. Okay. No. That, that's lovely. Do you know what? This has just turned, this, this conversation has turned to a dark place. One person says, some people will just never grow up. We're all just children with a drinking permit. Yes. Yeah. When it comes to passwords, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let me tell you about this five-year-old since we have an, we don't grow up. Five-year-old called 911, and I think for a very good reason. It was for McDonald's, and how the police responded to this was awesome. Steve will tell you all about it. He's got the mix report for you at 617. 
BJ and Migs. Mornings on The Rock. 99.9 KISW. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. If you're hearing an informative newscast right now, well, then you must not be listening to BJ and Migs. Live from the KISW News Center in downtown Seattle, this is the Migs Report. Well, thanks, guys. Thanks to Kia Pure for giving us news and sports. It's time to bust out the Lowenbrow. It's International German Beer Day. Oh, nice. I couldn't think of any other. What's another good German beer? Bex? Bex? Is that? I think Bex is Danny, German. you're the beer guy. Yeah, I don't drink German beer, though. Oh, oh see? Oh, you're yeah. such a racist. Nah, just, just drink <laughs> Jägermeister instead. Okay. Yeah. Oh, my first Jäger bomb. <laughs> <laughs> Am I right about Bex? Uh, I don't know. It's, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm looking at all these other beers. Spaten, Oktoberfest. Ach. Yeah, I'm not going to try. <laughs> but a okay. lot of stuff I can't pronounce. German beer. Yes, Bex yeah. was brewed in the German city nice. of Bremen. All right. Boom. Awesome. There you go. Boom. Boom. Yep. Germany. That's an easy one to pronounce when you go to a bar. That's true. If you want to celebrate international I, German beer. I'm the back. Bar, so can I get the Schlaffenhofen? Oh, the Schlaffenhofen. It's <laughs> a nice light beer. <laughs> Schlaffenhofen. Schlaffenhofen. Yeah, it's probably easier to pronounce when you are drunk. You know, I should just went with International Pick Your Nose Day because it's that as well. Oh, yeah. yeah. Nice. Pick your nose, drink your beer, have a good day, everybody. Now that's it's a day. Tuesday. You also order some McDonald's. That's what a five-year-old boy in Wyoming did. But he didn't call DoorDash or you know go on Uber Eats or anything like that. He decided to call 911. Oh, yeah. Here's the thing. He was using a deactivated phone that his grandma gave him, but it was connected to Wi-Fi, and you're able to make an emergency call. So he... Dial. I think you can even make an emergency call on phones, even if it's not connected to Wi-Fi. I think that's one of the things that still works. Oh, that's so, cool. Yeah, so he, well, I mean, especially when you're hungry and you want McDonald's, you call 911 mm-hmm. like this kid. Here's the 911 call. Hey, County 911, what's your emergency? Can you bring me McDonald's? I'm sorry, what? Bring me McDonald's. No, I can't bring you McDonald's. That's cute when a five-year-old does it. If someone in their 40s is yeah. like, hey, can you bring me some McDonald's? Like a yeah. McFlurry. Not going to happen. No. But the cop went to check up on him because that's what they do when you get a 911 call. He passed the McDonald's and said, you know what? I'm going to grab the kid some McDonald's. Here he is talking about it. You know, I was laughing to myself. So, hey, I'm driving past McDonald's on the way there. I might as well get him something. I think the first thing he said to me was, my grandma's going to be so mad. Can you please go away? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so he said, how would how, how we miss Heineken? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, Heineken. That, that's Amsterdam. Ah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, it is Amsterdam. Thank you, Danny. Yeah, I, that's Dan. why I missed it. Hey, speaking of uh, McDonald's, you know how they like to add all these new items, and they're adding some new items around the world, and they're going to be in starting up in June. Here's some of the items that are coming out in McDonald's in certain places. Some of them not here in America, actually. None of them, which makes me very upset on a oh. few of these. So I'm curious if you would want this in America. Okay. The Grand McExtreme Bacon Burger. So okay. burger with creamy bacon sauce, bacon, and gouda. Yeah. Yes. Ooh. All right. We got to go to Spain to get that one. This is the one I want bad. And I'm, I, I hope that they make it happen because, you know, I like any kind of ice cream that has caramel in it. The grand, uh, I mean, sorry, the Stroop Waffle McFlurry. What's that? It's a waffle. I mean, it's a McFlurry with caramel waffle cookies blended in plus caramel sauce. That does. Or caramel, sound. depending yeah. on how you like to say it. Sounds yeah. great. That does sound Either good. way. Stroop waffle cookies are awesome. Plus, wow. I just like being able to say, can I get the Stroop waffle McFlurry? I'll get a Stroop waffle for you. Oh, uh, cheesy bacon fries. That's in Australia. Yes. Yeah. yeah what, what is going on that we don't have these? And the tomato mozzarella chicken sandwich, and that's going to be in Canada. Ooh, tomato mozz chicken sandwich. Yep. What? That's it. That's chicken that. breast with tomato mozzarella and tomato and herb. It's in the herb sauce. Oh, man. That sounds good. See, that, it's almost like a Parmesan. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Here's a guy who learned a valuable lesson. Of course, it happened in Florida. If you're going to pretend to be a cop, it's not a good idea to pull over an actual cop. Oh. And that's what happened to this guy. He decided, you know what? I think it'll be fun. I'm 26 years old. My name's Joseph, and I want to play cop. So he got fake squad lights. He put them in his SUV. He did the whole thing where he's, like, driving around. He flashed the lights on somebody and decided to pull them over. For what reason? Not exactly sure, but he pulled over this guy. Turns out it was an undercover police officer. Wow. I'm, you know what? I'm glad that's the guy that got pulled over because that's my big fear is that it's not a real cop. Well, they always say if, you're, if, if you've got that feeling that you don't think it's a cop, call the police and say, hey, I'm being trailed by a, what I don't believe is a cop. The, the lights don't seem right. And, and 
they, they'll tell you if there's an actual police officer trying to pull you over. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so that's always something to keep in mind because there's some weirdos out in this world, like this Joseph guy. So then they did a, an actual traffic stop on Joseph, and they found that he had an airsoft gun under his uh, passenger seat, and he was arrested for all this stuff. Boy, this guy. This guy's a genius. I love this story. NHL playoffs are going on. Playoffs. Unfortunately for the Winnipeg Jets and their fans, they're done. St. Louis beat them four games to two in that playoff series. Uh, but one of the members of the, the Winnipeg Jets was being interviewed, and you got to love the reporters that just ask stupid questions. And I love the way that he responded. Because he just, you know, at that point, his team just lost. Yeah. The last thing he wants to hear is, hey, I didn't realize you guys didn't play as well as you probably wanted to. Or, you know, like one of those stupid questions. Well, what kind of yeah. answer do you think you're going to get? Blake Wheeler, he's a member of the, the Winnipeg Jets. And here he is talking to a reporter right after they lost their series. In the elimination game, you guys probably expected your best, right? Um, what, what happened? Uh, please come on, man. I mean, like, this is a tough trophy to win. You know, maybe our best just wasn't good enough today, you know, and uh, their best was was, was pretty how about that? Told yeah. him to F off. F off, pal. F off, reporter. <laughs> oh, the, 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 the St. Louis Blues, like I said, won. They're going to be taking on the Stars. They move on. They had a big win in overtime against the Predators. Uh, Carolina tied up their series with the Caps tonight. I'm sure you'll be watching, BJ, or maybe you're not. I don't know if you've given up on the Boston Bruins. Not at all. I, I hope not. It's game seven, baby. Yeah. I, you know, I didn't realize the, how good of a team we were, but my buddy Gary is a big Bruins fan, and we were talking this weekend, and so he's renewed my interest. Game seven. This is the time to watch playoff hockey if you're, if you're new to the sport this is the perfect time to check it out because everybody just loses their mind on the ice it's always yeah. a lot of fun boston versus toronto tonight also game seven vegas versus san jose whoa san jose came back in that yes. series okay first place mariners that's yeah. right they're in Woo! first place they're baby back. Uh, they're playing in San Diego tonight. That's at 7 o'clock. And the Mariners are currently 16-9 and nine on the season. So still looking good, BJ. Well, I'm just hold- series. I'm holding out hope that we end April in first place. Because, yeah. again, there's nobody with the thought that for the month of April, you know, when it was over, that we'd be in first place, let alone, you know, the, the start we had. I just text the stupid Thunder. They're down three games to one in the trail- against the Trailblazers uh, in, the, in the NBA playoffs. Yeah. Game five is tonight. Go Trailblazers. Sonic's curse still alive. Yeah. As far as weather, 56 degrees and cloudy. And thank you, Snow Kwame casino for giving us the mix report oh you're very welcome steve i mean now that durant's not even on the, the, the thunder anymore is there any really connection in my it, i know some people still you know some you yeah, all right that was our team i had an uh, where was I? I was in vancouver for the steel panther shows and i went to one like you know like a little pharmacy store i'm wearing my sonics hat and this guy goes sonics huh? i'm like yeah he's like so you a thunder fan it's like no and he was really offended by that. He didn't understand why I wouldn't be cheering for the Thunder. He's like, well, that's your team. They're, they're, Grand, they're not in Seattle, but that's your team. We're having this debate. Yeah. And I'm like, no. He goes, and then he asks, well, who do you root for now then? I go, anybody that's playing the Thunder. That's what it is. Of course I'm not going to root for the Thunder. Yeah, it, I, I don't know what it is for other people because, uh, you know, other, I, if people have done that with their teams. But it just felt so just just underhanded how it all went down that we're like, we're not going to root for anything to do with that team because of how it was taken from us. But if you're not from Seattle and you don't have that, you know, that anger about yeah. how it all happened, maybe as an outsider you think it's kind of odd that you're not going to still cheer for a team because the players were still going there and I don't know and, and, and I'm sure in his head that made sense I couldn't wrap my head around it but I was trying to I was just like okay you're not from Seattle so you don't understand why we're pissed at the Oklahoma City Thunder but in his mind I guess he just thought oh yeah you're going to root for them because all the players went there yeah it's uh, it, the, the one that really gets me would be Baltimore it's like you know you wonder what those old school Baltimore fans like if it ever would they ever get split when the Colts come to town and play mm-hmm. the Ravens, like it, I, it, that's probably a question I can ask uh, in a thrill, a Miles and Thrill, because I, you know the Baltimore Colts were a great franchise and uh, they had a lot of great players, that great history, and then of course they moved to Indy, kept the same name, pretty much kept the same uniforms too. Yeah, and so that's you know, I mean, the, to me it's like, oh, that's a tough one when you actually see your colors still out there. At least for us, we go all right. They they didn't even though they say they got a history, they didn't take our colors, they didn't take our name. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, so I wonder about old Baltimore Colts fans and how they feel. Or if they're just like you, Stephen. You know what? When you come to town, I hope the Ravens just yeah, destroy I'm, I'm you. Just going to cheer for anyone playing them. Yeah. That's a, that's a tough one. Because I think if, yeah, I, it's never happened to me so much. So it's hard to know. This is the first time when it, it would be the Sonics, the first team I've ever experienced being taken away from from uh, a place I live in and the team I like. So that's a good point. You should ask that guy if he roots for the Memphis Grizzlies, formerly of Vancouver. Oh, good call. 
I was really hungover. I couldn't think that quick. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> I totally forgot all about the Memphis Grizzlies. I, I didn't even know they were still in basketball. All right. Shows Let's... how much we keep tabs on the NBA. Yeah, uh, they're still a team, huh? That's awesome. Got a, a new survey, because, and this is very timely, because uh, you may be waking up to the dulcet tones of Steve Miggs. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. But they're saying that if you wake up to music instead of an alarm, it actually can get you out of bed faster and help you feel less sluggish and more alert. Which is kind of cool because I know uh, I think we uh, you, you can wake up to us if you want to mm-hmm. you know and we we'll throw a little music on for you once in a while. What do you wake up to? Do you wake up with music or do you wake up with one of those loud alarm sounds? So I have uh, the uh, Echo. Okay, and she plays me a nice little wake up a wake up for my alarm. It's like it's really like it's it, it sort of ascends and it's just sort of like all, almost new agey. I'm too scared about the ones that just slowly build into a wake up. Like the, the like the small like the soft music that keeps getting a little bit louder. I'm always worried that that won't wake me up. Oh, I can see that. And I feel like a lot of my alarms, and I listen to a lot of music anyways, I'm feeling that the music is just going to end up getting incorporated into my dreams, and then I'm just going to keep sleeping. Mm. That happens. Well, you got to get something catchy. That's oh. what they're saying. If you wake up to so catchy not, songs. Because uh, 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 that's mine is. Oh, that's like, oh that, that sounds like an EDM kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> I got yeah. that, and yeah, then I got those that? those little hammer bell alarms. Oh, that's oh. old school. Oh. Yeah. Dang, wow. you still got that going on. I got on, two huh? of those. Yeah. When those wake up, I better hurry the F up because those wake up the Weiski. Yeah. And I don't blame her. She doesn't like those at all. So I need to get those off as soon as possible. I remember those days. I know my They're wife. They're jarring. I know. My wife just was so frustrated with me. And then I would snooze. I bad, but, but, you know, back in the early parts of my career, I just hated getting up as early as I did. So I would set the alarm an hour earlier than I had to get up just so I could snooze. Oh. And, my, oh. Oh, and my wife was just like, you, I can't sleep with you anymore. But I used to think I was getting a bonus because I hated I hate the alarm. I want to make fun of you, but I do the same thing. There we go. No, I, I, but I maybe maybe I snooze once if I'm super tired, but then I get I have to get up because I, I don't want to wake up my wife. So you know, I say I got to speed this up. No, I got yeah. nobody to worry about. So, but I don't do an hour. I do an hour and a half because they say that your REM sleep is uh, ninety minute cycles. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. And actually, I used to put an like every single hour from midnight till the time I got up an alarm, and I got no REM sleep. So I Jeez. adjusted it. And it worked. Whoa, dude! Yeah. Every single hour. And I re- I'm like, why am I so tired? And I told Rev, and he's like, you're an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> you need to. You need to change mm-hmm. this. And it helps. That's a good answer to anything when you ask us a question. Yeah, exactly. yeah that's a good call. That's all I'm really asking for. <laughs> wow, I mean, I, I just did the hour early. I never thought of, like, from midnight till you had to get up, you just had that thing go off every I, hour. I don't think anybody thinks like that. Yeah, good old Vicky. Except for Vicky. Yeah. So I used to use my favorite song as my alarm, but it only made me, and it ended up making me hate those songs. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. That is very, very interesting. I hadn't thought about that. This study says, though, that, you know, the music does help wake you up. It makes you in a better mood. But, yeah, I would think, like, the texter. You know, like, like I, I'm never happy when I have to get up. But they're saying that if you do these upbeat melodies, they do a better job than an alarm at holding your attention, which does help your brain get going. Okay. So here's a song. This is pretty interesting because I just, I, I actually saw, I saw the beginning of Vegas Vacation. And Chevy Chase was singing this song at the beginning of that movie, actually. And, um, and this is uh, the Beach Boys. This is a song. They were like, it's a good one. <laughs> Up to this. I'd rather. Uh, 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 you don't like this song? It's kind of what that tambourine is, anyway. I like I like when the Beach Boys did acid. I don't like when they're just all happy go lucky. <laughs> Arguably, Good Vibrations was a happy go lucky doing acid song. Actually, <laughs> okay, fair enough. But, uh, but yeah. musically, it sounds like they were enjoying the acid. Yeah. Uh, how about this then? How about waking up to this one by The Cure? I like this one. Danny's digging it. Yeah, right? It's just yeah. like, maybe it would work. See, both of these have sort of uh, alarm type sounds. The tambourine with good vibrations and then that little whatever piccolo or whatever the hell that yeah, thing that, was. That, that was it's close to skin me. flute. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah the skin flute <laughs> is really what makes that song. That sounds like so many of my iPhone like alarm sounds. Yeah. Isn't uh-huh. that bizarre? But it's got a little beat to it. Yeah. Wow. So it says, give us a break, Migs. I know what you wake up to, and it's on repeat. And then they said it was this. <laughs> <laughs> that would be funny. That would be right? great to see if you if you could wake up to that. To the turtle sex? Yeah. That would weird my wife out. <laughs> I should do it and not tell her. Yeah, you really should. Yeah. Really All should. of a sudden. Wow. <laughs> 
Wow. Owen Wilson? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I like turtles. There you go. And that's yeah, that's how it ends. Yeah. Yeah, just I'm a, up. Yeah, a little bit of that. I think you gotta try that. Oh, I would love to just to hear what your wife would say. Like, what is wrong with you? Oh, that's great. Well, I hope... Uh, of course, yeah. she'll text me when she gets it. I had the weirdest dream. Yeah. <laughs> there were turtles in bed with us. Yeah, honey, that is weird. You ought to go see somebody. <laughs> Yesterday, Steve, he did get this one right. In the show Stranger Things, what tabletop role-playing game were the children playing right before Will disappeared? Yahtzee. No. Um, Yahtzee. Ouija board. No. Dungeons and Dragons. Yes. Ash, you know what? Whatever. That seemed like a really lucky guess. No, I know my D&D. <laughs> the D&D. The oh, D&D. I know that D&D thing. All right, you want a shot at Pete Steve? Okay, you know your D&D. 206-421-ROCK. We're playing Pete Biggs at 647 on The Rock. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. Here's another question from a listener. If I can't afford to pay my bills, how am I going to afford attorneys and bankruptcy fees? You know, one of the things people ask me all the time as a bankruptcy lawyer is that how am I going to pay all these fees and costs because I'm here because I can't afford to pay my bills. And, I, of course, we understand that. I mean, being, being in, in the bankruptcy field... Uh, but you know, one of the things to remember is is that if you decide once you make the decision to file bankruptcy, you can stop paying on all of the creditors that are going to be included in the bankruptcy, and those are the funds that you can use that you have been paying your creditors to pay your your attorney fees and court costs to get your case filed. And once your case is filed, you're not going to have most of those payments anymore. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at choosetherightchapter.com. That's choosetherightchapter.com. Thanks for listening. Keeping up with the flood of news every single day can be quite stressful. There is climate change happening. There's the pandemic, labor movements, Nicki Minaj's cousin's friend. Hi, I am Gideon Resnick, host of Crooked Media's What a Day. Each week, Travel Anderson, Priyanka Arabindi, Josie Duffy, Rice, and I are going to break down the biggest news stories of the day in a way that hopefully doesn't always make you want to cry. New episodes of What a Day drop every weekday at 5 a.m. Eastern. Listen on Odyssey, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.